We are now, oh, <laughs> we, <laughs> so we used to say we. And I just anchored, not just now, maybe a couple of hours ago. And I found a little spot. There's just correlates everywhere. And I found a little spot here. That first of all is shallow. Lots of sand. Looks almost like the exumas. And very far away there's corals. It's, it's really one of those amazing shelves. It very quickly gets deep to about 10 meters. And then maybe for 400 meters that way and then it just drops off. So to find sand on this shelf is it's pretty amazing. But it is it was a nightmare. I couldn't find a spot where there was not corals or coral eggs. The uh, bombies. <laughs> so and it's very close to shore. But I guess I'm not away from the thunderstorms, even though Brett, the, the big one that was, the, I don't think it formed a hurricane, but we all was hoping it will not form a hurricane. It looks like hope. <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, so that one is coming in, in two days' time. We are two crazy but dogs, and that's Rick and Pietro. We decided to chuck it all, and we are now living and sailing full time on our new home. Sailing Sisu, if you want, if you want, sailing Sisu. Whoa! Yes. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Here we go. Down and get up. <laughs> Huge, huge swells. Yeah. I just checked the weather. And if I sail now, it will take... <laughs> yeah, I've got six weather models to check. And they, they vary from four days to six days. And I think the big reason is um, Cindy, another thunderstorm or tropical storm that's coming after tropical storm Brett, which is right here now, supposed to be just passing us there, <coughs> but on the on the southern side of of Cuba and Haiti. So uh, between it's now between yeah, Haiti and Cuba, but it's very far south. So there's, there's just going to be maybe a rain or something like that. Um, and it's he's busy fizzing out because it's over the, the land mass, so not much threat there, but it creates wind. The second one is Cindy, but Cindy is going to go north and because is it a she then? <coughs> so Brett is a he and Cindy is a she. Anyway, then she will go up north but pull some of the, the trade winds with. So that's why some models say nine days and other models think Cindy will be higher, so the trade winds will be there and we will go. But that's, to wait for that lull is way, 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 maybe like three, four days from now. And Pietro is going to land and I would like to be in Puerto Rico when she's landing. So I've got a lot of time to get there, but it's better to rather just wait and see if the, if there's a lull, and then just carry on the moment. And I checked the diesel. The diesel looks fine. This is still from Staniel Key. Uh, I think it was. Let me check. So this is a track from Staniel Key, and you can see there's 345 nautical miles, and I use less than a quarter tank on both engines to get here in that many miles so let us see how that track looks like yeah so we're going through tack tack this was quite nice and the wind started turning and then tack 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 <laughs> all the way here um 
so I think I just when we went over the banks here yeah. so stack tack 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 I think it's only here where I motored you can see there I motored in a straight line straight line because here was very very tricky stuff um, and then I started tacking again so stack tack I think here was also motoring because it was through this funny rocks and things and then going over the banks through here so because of that I had to make sure that I get to the point where I'm headed for and not veer off but and then over here start attacking again um, as you can see <laughs> tack 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 the weather looks good and because it's going to be more than five days no weather model can predict actually what will happen three days from now. I don't think even most of them know what's happening tomorrow. <laughs> but it's an indication that it, it, it will be a good place. But still, whether I go now or in four days time, the weather still cannot predict what will happen exactly in five days or three days time. So I'm going to start now. There's no hurricanes in the route. There's no, well, there is thunderstorms. You cannot miss that. Even I can see there's one building over there. So, <clears throat> and there's one building. Oh, the sun is maybe very tough for you. But yeah, they, they, it's now that time of the year. Thunderstorms is everywhere. Tropical storms. There's none on the horizon. I don't see any little bumps. You know, if you want to look whether there's a hurricane, possible hurricane forming. The, all the Aizu bars goes like a little bump. It makes these little bumps. And those bumps, not a little bump. Depends on your scale, of course. If you zoomed in, it will just go like this or something. But if you zoom out, it just makes this little bump. So. If you look at those things, that's where the possible hurricanes is, or hurricanes are. And I don't see any of those. Um, I could see, I could see Brett and Cindy long before they've been declared um, that they might be forming. So that's why I headed for this place. As you can see, very protected. <coughs> There's now supposed to be a 22 knots out just out there coming over here is supposed to be 18 knots as you can see over here is six knots not much so this is actually a very protected anchorage for winds it's coming from the from the east so I will not <laughs> yeah I'm not sure yeah, well you can take winds from that side but that's just open 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 so it will start standing up and breaking maybe here yeah, was the 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 drop off is literally 400 meters from here so from that side I will not take big waves they will break they, this will become like a beach I'm sure <laughs> and that will be a beach <laughs> anyway <coughs> I think I'm ready to go it's just going to stow this stuff okay Beatrice stuck there to that. This thing, the soda stream flew quite a lot. The candles is below there. Uh, yeah, I remember now. This little bugger also flew, so I'm going to just put it there. These radios, maybe just like that. Okay. And I think the rest. I put those things down like that. That one is down. And yeah, the rest I think is good. And Topex is stowed here. A line going this way. Another line going here. Also going to that cleat. So I think we are good. Let's go raise the main. Oh, I see hatches open. Let me close the hatches. Uh, 
there's still a lot of salt on Sisu but I'm not going to waste waste fresh water because when we go around that corner there it will be back to salt again I'm going to raise the main now but there's a, there's a trick that I'm going to show you guys because I know we're going to go upwind I'm going to I'm going to make this trick for I'm going to set the main while for upwind problem normally I do this at anchor and I might be able to do this but the reason why I cannot is I have this so it's a quite a degree and if I bring the main up yes we will swing into the wind but then we will be wind against the current and we will start sailing and I'm so low, so I cannot keep the anchor. <laughs> huh. Okay, so I'm going to raise the main when we're out. It always looks, always looks so calm from here. But when we get out there, uh, it's going to be crazy. Okay, so I'm going to raise the main just outside there and I'll show you guys. So for now, lift the anchor. <laughs> And here is the steps. When I drop the anchor, I put a waypoint down. And now so that's where the anchor is now. So I just go there and say go to. Then I can see we are 31 meters. And that is at 28 meters. This is a chain counter. And I could remember that we were, we because you cannot always set it 100% at the drop point so um, because the anchor might take a meter to set or you go too fast backwards but no I'm pretty good you see 29 29 okay the whole idea what I want to do now is to make sure that this chain is straight and all the way back and now because the wind is like this it's going to be a little bit tricky Okay, I'm just going to go and prepare the, the anchor there, the water, I just checked now that the water was running, so it's good. Okay, great, it is now at zero, so we're going to bring this one up, this is the main halyard, and it will be difficult to see up the sun. The other thing that we do is we release the sheet lines. I'm holding it and do that and then ease off slowly, check that the sheet lines is okay, is they okay. Okay, now they are free to, to go. Okay, I'm going to raise the main and the main sail, the main halyard, I'm just going to chuck that way, away from my feet and the reason is if there's a bite and I step accidentally on it or my feet get entangled in the mess when something happens, I don't think there will be something happening but I always care for, for that. Okay, maybe we can go a little bit slower. <laughs> okay, we're getting close to the shore again. We still have 500 meters. Okay, let's start this thing. And what I'm looking now at is that this, 
the sail, the battens is not getting into into the lazy jacks. Because we have wind vane zero, it will flap, so I just have to wait a little bit. If it does want to go into the lazy jacks. You see like now, look, that's going to go into the lazy jacks. Oh, let me turn a little bit. So I'm just going to turn that way a little bit more. And then you will see. There we go. Okay, I brought, ooh, I brought it back. So the other issue that I'm looking at, I'm look, because we are wind vane zero, it will be there, but because I reduced the, the speed, um, we might get off the wind. And then I'm also looking at the reef lines and other lines that I don't get entangled. And I'm going to put up with reef one. So I didn't open the clutches because that's the first reef. Um, so this is reef one, two, three. But I kept them closed uh, because I'm going to start off with reef one. And I can see the reef point is coming out. I want to make sure that one is quite close to the boom and I marked it so I know the and I've done this now before because I came in I just checked the depth as well because <laughs> we still have plenty of depth but I think only for 20 more meters now what I do is I center the boom And I pull this as tight as I can. Ah! And of course, before I start manipulating this, I already close the clutches. If you just pull this, that main is going to rip your hands apart or bring your hands in here, so you don't want that. So make sure the clutches is closed. Okay, the main is up. You can see it's already want to fly. I'm going to release my topping lift. I can see it's going to chafe the main right up there. Huh. Okay, we're very close to shallow water and we're going to go now that direction. Okay, last thing that we do. Okay, second last thing is clutch the, the main halyard off. Ease off slowly. If you don't ease off slowly, you hammer this one and it's like a big shock onto the system. You don't want that. And then, yeah. I think I'm going to turn first. <laughs> Let me turn. I'm going to put it back on auto and just point us in that, that direction. Let's go. So I just do manual. I'm going to check here, yes, so we're going, oops, that we're going past, past the point. I think we can now start going faster. Two engines, 1,000, whoops, 
1,800. Oh, we're going over, we're going over, we're going over. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's a big thing to be solo cameraman and solo sail and <laughs> check all these things. Okay, I think CC is more or less settled in that direction. Autopilot, and we have still a couple of meters uh, that we can play with. So now the wind is not right for the sail configuration. And but I know around this point we're going to go upwind the whole trip. It's literally upwind the whole trip to Puerto Rico. Yeah, that's where I'm going <laughs> on my own. This is still the Bahamas, this is Inagua Island to Puerto Rico. So, and all the way from here, from the Bahamas to, not from here, but from Bahamas to Puerto Rico is basically upwind. So that's why I've set the sail already on reef one, so I can handle up to 30 knots of wind before I need to put into reef two. And I looked at the weather, there's not much coming that way. So for now I can, I can feel safe on reef one. But if I need to, I will just put on reef two. And I put it in that position. So this, this little bit of, of inconvenience, if you want to say it like that, it's not going to be a big problem. You, I will put up the Genoa now and you will see we will sail. Okay. Two turns. Open, pull it, open, and I think we're good. Of the engines. Feather the props and just like that, silence. Everything is done, time for a coffee. It's now, it's now, only now half past eight. Oh, and I'm going to put, put tracking up and tell my friends and family, actually just my family, <laughs> I'm on my way.